let's talk about a problem that's facing many people these days. You want a powerful computer, but you can't afford one. Chances are, if you have a budget of, say, $300, you're not going to be able to get much. You're certainly not going to be able to get a Mac that's less than five years old. And most PCs that cost $300 or less are terrible. Horrible! They run on Pentium processors. That came out in 1990! Something. So, clearly, you don't want to dump $300 on a computer with a Pentium, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a 150 gigabyte hard drive, because that's pretty much 2006 technology. So let's talk about a used PC. Personally, I think the best used PC that you can get is the HP EliteBook 8460W. This computer came out originally in 2011 for a price of about $1400, but it no longer costs anything like that. In fact, you can pick one up on eBay, a refurbished one that's from a trusted seller, for around $275. This may not be the newest computer, or the best looking computer, but I actually think it looks pretty nice. It's very heavy duty. The chassis and a lot of the parts of this computer are magnesium, which means that it's not your average cheap plastic PC that you find a lot in this era. Also along the back, we have this metal bar, which I actually think looks pretty good. It's the hinge housing, and it's a very durable hinge. Now, the bottom case of the computer is plastic, but it's not flimsy at all. It's very, very sturdy and it has a magnesium and titanium chassis inside the framework of the computer, which means, as a result of that, this computer is rated drop safe from about the height of your average desk. So you could drop it off of there and it would be absolutely fine. It's designed to take the punishment. The screen is a 1366 by 768, 16 to 9 aspect ratio. It's also in a non-glossy matte coating, which is very nice because it's not very reflective, although I will say the viewing angles are not spectacular. The screen itself is a bit dull, but it gets the job done. The palm rest and keyboard surround are also made of that brushed magnesium that we see on the lid. So let's run through some of the ports that we actually get on the computer. So we have a headphone jack, a microphone jack, an e SATA plug, a USB port, a hard drive connector, a Kensington lock, a dial-up modem port, a VGA port, an Ethernet port, our power plug, a Firewire plug, a USB, another USB, a DVD, and an Express card and an SC card slot. The trackpad is made out of glass, like on a MacBook Pro, and the buttons for left and right click are very satisfying, even though there are four of them. This computer has one of the best keyboards I have ever used. The key travel is very good, and the keys are very crisp, they pop and bounce. Yay! We also find, as a nice bonus, a fingerprint reader, which I find to be very, very accurate. It gets my finger almost every time if I swipe it correctly. Now, unlike some computers, this one does not have a magnetic lid. It does have a very, very heavy-duty latch system. So you are not going to be worried at all about your lid popping open on this thing because those latches are unbelievably strong. In between the G, H, and B keys is one of those weird little nubbly things that's also a trackpad and... I, I don't know, I don't use it, it's stupid. At the top of the screen, is an ambient light sensor, which is rare in a lot of PCs these days, and also a webcam. Now when you push in on the ambient light sensor, a weird little light comes out of the screen with the intent of lighting your keyboard, but I find that it is completely useless. The only thing that it actually illuminates is the magnesium just above the keyboard. Overall, this computer has probably the best build quality that I have ever seen on a PC. It rivals that of a MacBook Pro. Doing maintenance on this computer is just about as easy as it could be. There are two little switches on the bottom of the casing, and they pop out the battery, and the cover, which allows you to change the hard drive, the CD player, the graphics card if you want to, and the RAM, as well as the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi modules. So when we actually turn this computer on, then we get to see the real upsides for this computer. 
because for $275 used, of course, you get a quad-core Intel Core i5 clocked in at 2.6 gigahertz. This particular computer has a one terabyte hard drive. Now it's not an SSD, although installing one is as easy as installing a regular hard drive. This computer comes stock with four gigabytes of RAM, but this computer in particular is upgraded to 12 gigabytes of RAM. Our Wi-Fi is 802.11bgn, which is nothing spectacular. The graphics card is not an Intel HD graphics. None of that integrated graphics crap that we had to deal with in a lot of newer computers. It has an AMD Mobility Fire Pro... Fire... Fire... Pro... Fire Pro Mobility... M3900 chip. I'm not even gonna pretend that you know what that is. I certainly don't. All I can tell you is that it's really fast. Now this computer is obviously not designed for gaming, but for those of us who like the occasional game, you can absolutely run Minecraft at 50 or 60 frames per second on high graphics settings. The native OS for this computer is Windows 7, and I must say, HP has some really, really great bundled software to go with it. You get your fingerprint scanner, drive encryption, even face recognition that's fairly accurate. You also get a very nifty HP management tool that will keep your computer running smoothly by defragmenting your hard drive and cleaning out unnecessary files. Overall, I think this might be the best PC that you can buy for under $300. It's certainly better than any of its modern sub-$300 counterparts because it has just better specs in general. If you liked this video, make sure that you comment, share, and subscribe to my channel so that you can catch more from me next week. 